Okay, I'm gonna just draw a little bit of what we need for the ears. It's, um, well, I'll do it in unison with bending the wire. We need to find the center of the wire. So I give it a nice little sharp pinch there. Then an eighth inch, if that, out from that, you're gonna bend the wire up. And that's just so we know it's like a teeny tiny little W. And that's just so we know that that's the center and this is gonna go on top of the head. Now for the snow hair, I go three inches up um, from that bend. So I'll hold my ruler and mark it three and do the same to the other side. Now what I want this to look like is a little tilty. There I go. Let me use the Sharpie. But if I mess up with the Sharpie. So I have my little, um, oh, I did already. I have my little W. And when I go up the three inches, I want this to turn. I want this to be a nice arcing three inches. And then I'm gonna fold it sharply down. I should have done it to scale. Maybe it is, no, it's not. Um, so I want those to turn and then have a fold, a sharp bend down. So the outside of the ear is straight, the inside of the ear has a little curve. So now my next trick <laughs> is to cut a piece of my pre-felt to match this. Let me put this on the back oh, on the yeah. stab it. Oh yeah, what? You can see it a lot better. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So the pre-felt is we grab some scissors. <laughs> this is we're in this new space, which is awesome, but like when we're in my old space, like all my stuff is like all around me. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Oh, look. See, so you're gonna need it. I am gonna need it. I'm Definitely. About your fingers. And it gets makes those nice ear edges. I'm gonna tell you how big the pre felt is. It's about seven by nine. And I think the way that I worked it was um, ears and feet. Out of this, out of this side, and then this whole thing is available for your pelt. You're gonna have extra; it's fine. But so, if we just put the ears on here like this, then that's kind of what we want to cut out. So I'm gonna start there. I'm just cutting out a rectangle right now. Not getting too elaborate. And then the rest of that goes away. Okay, um, I do want to cut this. I do it all in one piece. I guess you could do two. Um, you could do two pieces of pre felt and do an ear at a time. Um, but it's I like kind of laying it all out and getting it all done in one piece. And then this stuff, you don't want a ton of excess, but okay. Now I'm going to take a brush <laughs> that I don't have in front of me. <laughs> I mean, look, I mean, look, really, you know, let's just do it in two pieces. It's going to be easier. Everybody's gonna be, it's gonna be easier than trying to fuss with that whole, whole thing. Thank you. Sure. If you don't have this, just use your fingers, but I'm just teasing the edge out so that when I do fold this over the ear, it, it just goes seamlessly without like a great big um, chunky edge. But try to just hit the edge and not pull the whole piece apart. Okie dokie. So we're gonna lay out um, 
some fiber on here. <sighs> Let's see, I got, I got these the way they are. We need to get some white on the back. So flip them over and then I'm gonna put a little bit of Serafina white across the bottom. I like to have the fringe so consistent but thin. I like to have the fringe coming off the side a little bit because that's got to fold around. And then I like to go a little darker at the tip so I think it looks cute. So you have um, a natural black. You could put a little bit of that at the top. Might be a little extreme, but. And then a gray. Can kind of be your blender. And then there's even oatmeal. Oh, there's two kinds of there's two kinds of oatmeal. This is a, a natural, a soft um, BFL natural color. Um, and then we have our carded core color. I'm gonna go with that one. So that's the back of the ear. It's thin, it's like you know, it's all going horizontally and it's just to get a little bit of color changes. So I'm gonna stab that so that it doesn't move too much when I flip it over. Hey look, you have a punch tool. I there. have a punch tool, it's so convenient. <laughs> Somebody's smart and thoughtful. So just enough to hold it on. I can still see, and maybe you can or cannot, <laughs> but I can still see that this is the turn and this is the straight side. So these are the outsides of the ears and these are the insides. Now here, um, it helps to look at a picture, but I like to get a little bit of gray and a little bit of tan in here. So I'm gonna go with tan towards the top. Just a, just a shading of it. And then um, the medium gray. Well, I'll use the, this is that natural um, oatmeal color. Put that down in the center. So when I fold the ear around, it's gonna look a little dark in the center, which I like. But this is all, you know, this can be done a, a million different ways. A lot of fiber there to choose from. Yeah. Just try not to get too bulky because they're not very big ears and they shouldn't be too chunky, you know? All right, so I'm gonna get this all lined up. I like to just kind of start with one side. Get that going. It's fun having the wire ears too because um, you can pose them. Leave this width at the bottom. Don't don't close this all up. We do that later. It can, it can get a little chunky towards the top, so just be careful that you're not getting too thick up there. And I want a good sort of eighth inch of my pre-felt to fold over that wire. Make sure you lift it off because we're stabbing. I love the way the back looks, like that fiber coming through. So this is like fun, but there's a lot of little details you could add to this. Um, they have a little, well, let me get the other one going. They have a little kind of black accent um, and then some white, little white poof. So rabbits don't seem to have that marking on the end of their ear. That is a very hair thing. Hair thing. Yeah, because the brown hairs have it too. So this is what I was talking about, getting chunky. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna try and pull a little bit of this pre-felt out of here. Hairs have 
more chromosomes than rabbits. Interesting. 48 to 44. Weird. I don't know what that means exactly. I mean, it feels like a lot of chromosomes, too. Yeah. What is a chromosome? I mean, like, I'm just trying to think, like, versus a gene. Don't know my biology very well. I think all the genetic markers are on the chromosomes. It's so funny. I feel like one ear came out like bigger and better than the other ear. I don't know what happened. Okay, so a little bit of details. I've got a little bit of black core. Um, and oh my God, it's so nice. This Ooh. is the new black core. Um, and this is going to be eyes, and it's just, it's just for details. But I can take a little thin strip of it and get this kind of edge here. Let me use my single needle so I can really... But yeah, look, definitely look at pictures and see what, you know, what details are important to you and that you want to include. Rabbits live in colonies, up to 20 rabbits, and hares are all alone. Mm-hmm, I know. Yeah, that's a little sad. Yeah, that's what Watership Down was about the rabbits. Um, with the Serafina white, we can do, if you just take a tuft of it, I like to do a nice little fuzz to the inside of the ear. These guys, it's a little, it's lower on the ear. That was a little too little. Here we go. I'm just restacking it to get it as short as possible. It's like an inch square. So I just want to stab the center of it along the edge of the ear. You could put a tiny little staple. So it's just a tiny strip of wool going along that center stab ensures that everything stays in place. And then No pink on these guys. I didn't do pink. They seem to have more of the browns. Mm -hmm. And then it just is like a bit of a poof like we do that on the donkey too but that's a bit much so I'm gonna cut some of it off and then on the outside of the ear I think it would help to get a little bit of detail as well so I'm taking some white but I'm just gonna put it vertically let the fringe blend into the gray and then just kind of sharpen up that outer edge of the ear and be care cautious of your wire. Mm -hmm. So I've got both my ears done. What? <laughs> Can you hear me? <laughs> And um, with the grab and stab, you can pinch your ear and go around and kind of neaten up the, the edges. Sharpen them up a little bit without danger to your fingers. Um, I could obsess over this 
a lot longer, but I don't want to have a two hour um, video that's just on ears. So I'm gonna let it go. And you people at home <laughs> obsess away. So now it's time to pinch them together at the bottom. And you can stab that. It, it, I guess it helps just to kind of get it a little bit stuck. It's a little tricky to find the right angle. I'm just stabbing at the bottom to hold that taco shape a little. Oh, look, it just popped right open. It didn't even matter. Now, I'm going to take the wires off to the side and put the ears right down onto the back of the head. I've got it right in line with um, the back of the neck. That's one very hair-like feature, is their ears like going right in a line with the back of their neck. And then um, the wires that are coming down the sides, you're just gonna take under the chin and as tight as you can around. So that one went that way, this one's gonna go this way. So I'm just as tight as I can, pinching them down. And that's what it looks like. Now I need off-white chunky core. I need a quarter of a strip, about a six inch strip. That might have been a little more than a quarter. And I need to wrap to hold the ears on. And all I'm doing is going around the head, but I'm crisscrossing between the ears each time I go. So one time I'll go this way and then I'll come around and then I'll go this way. So I'm going right in front of the ears to cover that wire. And now I'll go through that way and then I'll come around the head under the chin and now I'll go through that way. And that holds the ears on, covers the wire and builds up the head a little bit more does many, many things. Your head shape should look kind of like a rainbow. It should be very rounded and then either flat or slightly scooped on the bottom. Guess what? It's detail time. Ooh. I know. Jumping right into faces and feet. I'm going to start with the face because the feet are not my favorite. <laughs> feet have never really been your favorite. <laughs> Okie dokie. He looks a little bit like he's playing dress up. <laughs> I know, right? Okay, with the off white chunky core, we're going to wrap the end, round end of the Zoli tool and make a chin. So I have another six inch um, quarter. This might be a little too much, but um, it's good to start with and then we'll pull some off. So I go around the tool and then after I've gone around and it's all secure, I, I, I I head up over the facet and back. So up towards the point and back. And then I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna go around the tool and then I'm gonna go up towards the point and then angle back. So we're looking for a very, um, as much as you can, consistent, it's kind of shaped like a bullet. And it's about one and a half inches long. And we slide that off and I stab, it's gonna have a little bit of curve kind of one way or the other. Um, so I'm gonna stab the tip back to round it out. This is the chin end. The pointy end becomes the little chin. And then you see how it's flat on one side and curved on the other? 
the flat side is going to go up against the bunny. And this becomes the chin. And you can tuck it right into that little um, fold at the end of the nose. Not too far back, but they do have a bit of an overbite. But he's still going to get muzzle on there, so we don't want to go too far back. I guess it's sort of kind of in line, but the majority of the shape is sort of tucked right behind that fold. This, this face is pretty simple. It's not too many pieces. For the muzzle, I've been using um, oatmeal. I just like the way, I just like the contrast of the oatmeal to the white, to the white chin. And that's this one, the fuzzy one. Um, so this is about a four inch piece. And, oh, I have another four inch piece. So you have about eight inches left, but with about a four inch piece, split it in half. And then split one of those in half again. And I'm gonna use the um, face ace because it just makes a really nice shape and you'll get to see how this tool is used. So when I look at the face ace and I'm thinking about the shape that I wanna make, I'm thinking about the width of it. And I want the muzzle to be wide enough to come over the, um, just beyond the chin and come up to this head shape. So I want it to kind of span this whole area so I'm gonna wrap pretty far back on this tool so that I get that width. And I just wanna go around in about a half inch of space and make a nice little seed on here. And I like that amount of fiber that I had. I'm gonna slide that off and I'm gonna do it again. Male, male hairs are called bucks. Oh, interesting. And the females are does. And I'm glad I did this a little wider than I did the last time. So I've got a slightly thinner end and then a slightly more blunt end. The blunt end I'm gonna stab on itself just a little bit. I don't wanna go too crazy because um, I'm gonna shape this on it probably a little hard to see on the stab it because it's the same color. The piece is going to go on the side, but it needs to come around the front and dent in the center. The other way I've made this piece is to wrap it all as one piece, but I think people have a harder time controlling all of that. And then the fringe just blends back. So that's what it looks like. And I like to use a single needle just to control um, sort of how I'm how I'm shaping it. Sorry, it's a little tricky for me to... Well, I don't think you're on it. Okay, good. I'm not, I'm kind of tacking it on. I'm not going too, too crazy, but I'm looking to see that it kind of matches what I see when I look at a reference photo but there's more pieces to go on, so um, it's a little hard to tell exactly everything that's happening so far. Kind of want to get, they have a pretty good, pretty good um, dent in here, but I think that'll become more apparent as I, 
as I shape things. To get a little cheek, I'm just gonna take some off-white chunky core and I'm just like pulling a tuft of it. It's it's probably an inch and a half and or so. And I wanna squish it to go between the ear and the muzzle. I'm stabbing the center on just above that muzzle and then I'm gonna fold that over. And that's just gonna bring the muzzle together, give them a little bit more of cheek before we move forward. It's a little softer than doing like a whole shape, but I need to get that chin stabbed down in there more. It's a little too bump, bumped out. So that makes them look a little more rabbit light to have the cheek versus no cheek. I think a lot of the fun about all of this is learning what is available to you in terms of fiber, tools, and techniques. Like, so that when you're going to make something, you know what your options are to get the desired outcome. So really, the last piece of the face, aside from, you know, eyes and stuff is a nose um, uh, that we're gonna make on the felting surface. Um, and that comes back up here and it has a little point. Um, and it's a fun shape to make because it you get to blend colors like the ears. So let's start with off-white chunky core and try to get like a very light two inch square of it. So light meaning it's not um, it's not super thick. It's just like a like a wash of off-white chunky core. So that's um, two two and change, you know, with fringe, and then about two inches that way. And not super thick. Not no, super you just thick. Said that, but I know. This is how we see people. Yeah, people end up with critters have ginormous <laughs> faces. Too much wool. And then we want the Serafina white. It's just easier to it's easier to work with than the um, the fancy top coat and then same thing sort of glaze that over the off-white chunky core and then I like to go tan at the nose um, you could do oatmeal I'm gonna put that I should, I'm gonna back it up and put that first and then put the white on it maybe with a little bit of oatmeal to bring the tan and the white together when I say a little bit it's like a gossamer blender. Before I flip it over, I want to stab it. Now, what you see is what you get. So if you're looking at your piece right now and you don't have, and it's real stripey, that's the way it's going to look when you, it, it'll change a little bit because of the stab through, but take a minute just to get this looking um, the way you want it to. So mine's like a little dark over here. So I'm just going to brighten that back up with a little bit of of the white, but I'm happy with this transition. Okay, now I need to flip it over. And the shape is like, kind of like a bell. We've got to go, we've got to go pointy at the nose because that's the, that's gonna fold over and be like the rabbit's nose tip. And then narrow, like narrowish, and then kind of it's a triangle, it's a triangle, but it, it has a little bit of a flare. So I'm gonna find the center line and I do wanna go nice and tight little, little triangle at the tip of the nose, nice and pointy. And then I wanna take this in. So you have quite a bit of fiber here. So I wanna make sure that that's all kind of evenly overlapping each other. Sometimes I think that I can make the brows with this piece too, but I don't worry about it because sometimes it doesn't end up where you need it to be. So, And then I'm not gonna stab too much because I wanna be able to manipulate it. 
but just the tip of the nose, you know, you want to be fairly um, dis distinguished. Distinguished? Distinct? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Distinct, yes. Not extinct and not extinguished. The D version of all that. So the tip of the nose is going to come right over the muzzle. Um, reference pictures are priceless. And then this is all folded and stabbed, but I kind of want to like tease it out so that when I stab it on, it makes a smoother blend than being like this tight line. I want to undo the line. So I start by putting his head down and coming from the top to get everything centered and secure. What's cool is this fluff can come up and kind of encapsulate the ears, which makes it look more whole <laughs> and less like lots of different parts. So my eye is gonna go where that cheek piece kind of stop. Well, don't worry about that. Just get this piece on and then you'll, you'll see where your eye goes. Is it lunchtime? Uh, we're, we're getting there. So you brought up the eyes. They have their eyes on the side more so they can see their mm -hmm. the predators. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I have to scoot back down because that's how I have to have it. Do you know the main predators of the hare? I'm going to guess foxes, coyotes, that kind of thing. I'm sure you're right. This does not list the <laughs> Well, coyotes and wolves, I would say, are in the same family there. And also from the sky. Oh, hawks and eagles and stuff. Yep, and owls. Owls. Oh, my gosh. Run, little babies. <laughs> Isn't that cool, the way the face just, like, comes together with those pieces. I love it. So the eye, look at a picture. <laughs> they're set. I feel like I, they're always a little different than I think they are, but I've got some sculpting to do around the nose here. Um, but I want to figure out where the eyes go. Like Milo just said, on the side, Make sure you have room between your eye and your ear. I've got about a finger's distance there on each side. With the black, I'm gonna pull a strip. So I've got about an inch and a half strip. And I have just been folding my eyes in my fingers because I feel like I can get it more round that way and then it's a little bit soft so I can really sculpt it round. I sometimes make seeds on a tool, but um, that makes a hard shape and it makes an oblong shape. And I find that it's harder for people to, um, to get that round once it's all long and skinny like that. So I, I'm gonna put this on. I want it about the size of a BB or petite P. And then I wanna stab all around the edges so that it stays round and circular. I'll do my other, other guy. I watched the other guys last night. I love that movie. Have you seen I that don't movie? Know it. Oh my gosh. It's so over the top. <laughs> they just, they totally went for it. It's like Will Ferrell and Marky Mark and their cops. Oh, no, I don't Oh know. my gosh, it's so funny. It's so ridiculous. This the stuff they say and the characters. But when I need a laugh, it's a good one. This eye ended up not as tight, so it looks bigger. <laughs> but I think it's actually less wool. It's just poofier. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Okay, we need brows. 
Cool. It just sounded a little Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> we, need, we need the brows. We need the brows. And a little more cheek poof. Now the brows, you have a choice. Do you want it to have a little contrast and be tan? Or do you want it to be white? I think I made these guys with white. Yeah, I'm going to go with white. I'm going to use the Serafina white. And I like to do this on the face ace. And I'll show why and how. If you don't have the face ace, I'll show you how to do that too. So I'm going to make sure I have the same amount of wool so that they end up the same size because I'm doing two different techniques. On the face ace, again, I'm looking for that, that width that I want. Um, so just, just below the center of the tool here will do that for me. And I'm going to go around maybe three times, one, two, three and then leave the fringe. So that gives me a rolled edge and a fringy edge. And when I slide that off, now I have this little rolled edge to kind of um, manipulate where I want it to go. And I want it to encapsulate the eyeball a little bit, like kind of come out over it. And then I can stab it and, you know, back and, all right, so brow, no brow. If you don't have the face ace, you're gonna do what's called a double decker taco. So you put it vertically, go away, <laughs> and you stab um, about a third of the way down, fold it over, stab that same distance that we used on the face ace, which was about a quarter of an inch, fold it over, and now you have that rolled edge and the fuzzy edge. And the fuzz just goes towards the forehead. And hopefully they are somewhat the same. Um, they are, I just have to I just have to stab a little bit. Um, with the Serafina White, I want to do the same technique that I did with the Off-White Chunky Core. This time I'm going to put the center right under the eye and stab it. And then fold that down so now I've got a nice white, I'm teasing it out there so I don't get a line and I can tease some out to go over the muzzle here. And then, you know, how fuzzy you leave this um, is a choice. Like you can, you can fold it under and really stab it. For right now, I'm just gonna leave it. This is a pretty thin piece. It's not a lot of wool. Like the face is pretty much the shape that I want it. So this is more of a color thing than being about a lot of fiber. Hair's lived for about 12 years. Wow, that's a long that time. That seems like a long time. That's a nice life if that hawk doesn't get him. Yeah. <laughs> you got a mohawk? Yeah. Okay, this is, this is where it's like, okay, look at a picture, you know, stab, refine. Um, but that's your face shapes on there. I'm gonna put a little white dot in the eye and I switched to my, um, oh, that is my 40. I like, I like to use the 40. You might, um, you might want the 42, but. So it's Serafina white and it's a teeny, teeny, tiny bit. That one might be too teeny, tiny. And I just roll it in my fingers um, until you get a little dot. <laughs> And then I position the little dot 
Uh-oh, my dot got polluted. What, what was that? I don't know, <laughs> it just like came out of nowhere. I position it up and out, up and back. And so like two o'clock, one o'clock. But if you just stab in the same place, it'll get pretty tiny. It, it kind of can mess up an eye to, for the white dot to be too big. Um, so just be aware of that. I'm hitting the armature wire, which is frustrating me because I can't get it. There we go. You know, how much um, detail you put in terms of black line colors or that's up to you. I might do a little bit of shaping to the mouth, but I do not have a reference picture in front of me right now and I need that. So let's take a break right there.